Welcome to the past HC exam question video. In this video we're going to cover eight multiple choice questions that come from the 2001 to 2010 chemistry HSC exam papers. And they're going to be um, questions that cover the condensation polymer and biomass chapter. What we're going to do is every time I put up a question I will read it and then give you five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question itself. After those five seconds are gone, I'm going to continue speaking and, and answer the question. So take those five seconds, try to answer the question, and when you've answered the question, play the video, and I'll go over the answer itself. So the first question says, which of the following is a major component of biomass? A. Cellulose, B. Ethanol, C. Natural gas, or D. Oil? So again, five seconds, I'm going to pause for five seconds, pause the video and attempt to answer it. All right, so I'm back. Uh, the right answer in this case was which of the following is a component of biomass? was A, cellulose. The reason why the other ones are wrong, ethanol is a byproduct or a, a product which can be produced, product that can be produced um, by cellulose, but it itself is not directly biomass. Um, natural gas is also wrong because it's a fossil fuel and so is oil. So these are both are fossil fuels and thereby are not biomass. A was the correct answer. Now this is next one. So cellulose is a linear polymer which is a structural component of plant cell walls which is the correct, which is the correct representation of parts of a cellulose polymer. You can have a look at these, even though they're um, all kind of close together. Hopefully you can still make out which belongs to which. See which one's the right one, and you get five seconds. So hopefully you had a crack at this one as well. Now here we have to look at first, what we do is we look at the big carbon chains here, these ones, and see if they're on alternating sides. Remember they always have to be on alternating sides. Now in this case for A, they're on top here, they're on top here, top here, so they're not on alternating sides, not on opposite sides, so A is wrong. Um, same thing with here, with D, they're on the bottom, 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 so D is also wrong because they're not on alternating sides. So we're left with either B or C, which is the correct one. So they're both on alternating sides, so we've got one here, and then one here, and one here, one here, so that's the same for both B and C. But because the actual glucose monomers here are flipped, we're also going to make sure the actual bonds are on opposite sides. And if we check the bonds here, this one's a bottom, on a bottom, on a bottom, on a bottom. Whereas here it's bottom, top, bottom, top. Remember, this allows us to make a straight molecule, which is what we want. So this one's wrong because in this case the bonds are all on the same sides. These carbon groups plus the bonds have to be on opposite sides. So B is correct, and C is wrong. Again, I'll read it in five seconds to pause the video and try it yourself. Water is released during a polymerization reaction. Which monomer is likely to have been involved in the, in the reaction? A, ethene, B, glucose, C, styrene, D, vinyl chloride. Right, so I'll answer the question. So the correct answer was glucose. Um, the reason why ethane is wrong, ethane is um, usually to do with addition polymers. Addition polymers, there's nothing lost, there's no water molecules lost, only things gained. Same thing with styrene as well, styrene and vinyl chloride are all examples of addition polymers. And in addition polymers, you have no water being lost whereas glucose is the example of a condensation polymer. And in a condensation polymer, we usually lose a small uh, water molecule or a small molecule. And in the case of glucose, it's a small water molecule. Again, I'll read it and then you get five seconds to pause the video and attempt it yourself. Why is research into synthetic biopolymers attracting great interest? It, A, they decompose more easily than traditional synthetic biopolymers. B, they can be produced more cheaply than traditional synthetic biopolymers. C, they have superior physical properties compared to synthetic traditional polymers. 
or D, they have superior chemical properties compared to traditional synthetic polymers. All right, so you get five seconds. See if you can attempt it yourself. All right, so the correct answer was A. The reason why both D and C are wrong is because they actually have the same properties usually, physical and chemical. They are decomposable, that's the big difference, but in terms of physical and chemical properties, they're very similar. They are more expensive than your um, synthetic ones, so they're not they're definitely not cheaper. So the reason why A is correct is because A has to do with decomposition, and your biopolymers are usually the ones which decompose more easily. I'll read it again and then you get five seconds to answer it. Um, tyrolene or polyester is a condensation polymer. Part of the structure of the polymer is shown. This part here. What are the two monomers that form this polymer? A, B, C, or D. These, these two, these two, these two, or these two. Right, five seconds to pause and attempt it yourself. Right, with a condensation polymer, what we know is it has to have either OH groups, um, carboxyl groups, or amine groups. It has to have one of these three um, on the on the functional part, so the end parts. These end parts here have to be one of these. So we can see A is already definitely wrong because in this case, this monomer only has hydrogens. It doesn't have one of these. This one might be right, but this one's definitely wrong. Um, same thing with C. Here we have, again, we only have hydrogens at the end, so that's wrong as well. Now, if we look at B and D, they could be right because we have a hydroxyl group here and here, and we have a hydroxyl group here and here, and we have on the other end, we've got a carboxyl group here, a carboxyl group here, a carboxyl group here, and a carboxyl group here, so that's correct. But the way we can know that D is correct, because D is actually correct, the way we know D is correct and C is wrong, because because it says a condensation polymer, so that's when we lose water. So we lose water, and there's no need to have double bond being broken. So here we've got a double bond, whereas in the actual monomers we don't. We have a single bond. So this doesn't actually happen. This is false. It has a single bond, which is like this one here, because the double bonds only get broken for addition polymers, not for condensation polymers. So B is wrong, and C, D is correct. And these will join, the OH groups here will join, to form that condensation polymer. The next one, um, I'll read it again. Glucose C6H12O6 is a monomer that can form naturally occurring polymers. The proximate atomic weights for the elements which make up gluco glucose are shown in the table. Elements, carbon atomic weight of 12, hydrogen atomic weight of 1, oxygen atomic weight of 16. Using data from the table, what would be the approximate molecular weight of a polymer made from five glucose monomers? Uh, so again, five seconds, and then attempt it yourself, and I'll go over the answer. Right, so, I'm, so I'm back, so I've got my calculator here. Um, what I'll do is I'll go over each, what you have to do first. What, the first step is you have to find out how much one glucose molecule how much its weight is, and then times by five. So how do we do that? We've got the atoms here, and we've got the weights here. So we have carbon, which is atomic weight of 12. We've got six carbons in one glucose. So what we do is we have six times 12. Six times 12 is at C6, so 72 for carbon. I won't have to use the calculator for hydrogen because it's one times how many 12, how many do you have in one glucose? We've got 12, so 1 times 12. It's 12 for hydrogens. And oxygen is 16. Again, we have 6 oxygens. So we have to do... So we have to do 6 times 16. And that gets us 96. And then what we do is we add all that together. So we do 96 plus... 12 plus 72, that's how much one mole is, but it asks for five, so we still have to times that by five. So 180 is for one, and times five is for five, and that gives us an answer of 900. So that's 900 is correct, the other ones are all 
wrong. And the last one, what type of reaction describes the polymerization of glucose into cellulose? You're going to get five seconds. As the correct answer is condensation. The reason why the other ones were wrong is addition polymers is where you add something but you don't lose anything. When it comes to glucose, we put, make it into glute and cellulose, but we also lose water, so addition is wrong. Hydrolysis means the adding of water. We don't add water, we remove water in the condensation reaction. And substitution is just if you, if you exchange one thing for another. Again, that's not what we're doing. We're just joining them together and losing a water molecule. We're not substituting anything. So those three are wrong and the correct one answers D, condensation. So I hope that was useful.